So what's wealth for you? Write down three things. Yeah. Yeah. Three things. Hey, Thomas, can you hear us? Yeah, great. Can, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. You can hear us, yeah. What are the three things that determine your wealth? You work for it, you built it, and you reach your goal to make it. Right. So what is wealth? Does it, is it just money? No. It's, okay. It's goals. Okay. It's uh, achieving. Can you, um, sorry, uh, Zimi, can you uh, put the screen so that the recording is not this? Sorry. It's achieving goals that you look for and you uh, want to get to a point from A to B. Okay. When you get to B, you want to get to C. Mm -hmm. And when you get to C, you want to get to, you know. So that's probably. achieving your goals, right? Yes. But if, if I were to ask you, if you wanted to live a wealthy life, what would that include? Happiness. Comfort. So happiness. So happiness. Happiness is um, a, state. a state. You can be happy right now. Happiness is an instinct type of gratification you get in a specific moment. When somebody says, are you happy in your life? What the hell does that mean? Right? There's so many different components that add to happiness. When I say for you to have a wealthy life, a wealthy life is different for everyone. So what is it for you? Some people may be... Something. Yes, so write down health. Yes, I have family, health, and financial. Yeah. Those are my three things that, to me, if those were complete, I'm completely wealthy. Okay. So it's not only financial. What's more important, family. love or money? Love. The love of money. <laughs> <laughs> love and money. Yeah. I love money. What if I were to say, don't you use your hands and your legs for two different things? You're not going to walk on your hands and you're not going to feed yourself with your toes. You need them both. Yeah. Stupid question. Of course. You need them all. Yeah. Right? So if I were to say, what would you need for you to have a wealthy life? You would have to be in good house to make good money. Pick your limbs. Pick your hands. Pick your legs. Pick the most important things and don't let anything get off that track. Yeah. How often do we get off track? A lot. Why? Why do we do that? Distractions. Okay. Why? Why do we allow a distraction to be a distraction? Because we're a human. And because we're human. Being, we're human. <laughs> a human being is very easy to get distracted. Right. But what's more important, your distraction or your goal? Goal. So why, do why, we... That's why you come to the track. Because you look at your goals, you're not achieving your goals. And then you say, no, I have to go get my goals. So I have to go back on my track. What if I told you people would prefer to be distracted daily? You prefer to spend your day being distracted, but at the end of the day, after you're done your distractions, would love to say, wow, I achieved something. Yeah. So why are we more addicted to our distractions than we are to achieve our goal? Because we're not my failure. Uh, it's so easier. much easier. That's right. Come, let's go have a coffee. Let's mm -hmm. chat. Right? In that chatting time that you think was just two minutes, you could have, what, spoken to how many people in 15 minutes? Because thats it's not going to take two minutes. It's going to take 15 minutes. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why are we more, I'm going to use the word, addicted? A temporary happiness or fun. Or... Happiness. Yeah. Right? It's a state. In that one specific moment, you decided that what was going to give you happiness was that coffee and chatting with somebody or checking your social media or perhaps doing something that was just not important. How about when you're with your loved ones? Loved ones? Be present. Mm. How many of you actually get off your phone? How many of you actually? If you wanna live in Italy, in Tuscany, and go on seven vacations, I can answer my phone on Wednesday at noon. Yes. <laughs> However. We had a conversation today with her. You are very good at doing that segment. Okay? Most people are not. And why I say that is if you're spending time with your children, don't pick up the phone. 
right? Mm -hmm. Know that whatever is ringing is disturbing you with what you're doing right now. Segmentation. I am now with my family. How important is my family? It's in my top three. So if it's in my top three, I can call this person back. It is not urgent. How quickly do you get distracted from the things you are doing right now? Right? So right now we're here and we're learning about something. How easily are you distracted from that specific moment? And then you know what happened? You're working on your focus. How long can you stay focused upon one thing that is important for you? Do you have that ability? We live in a world where we're so distracted every two seconds. Oh, we look at our phone. Oh, for that fraction of a second, you may miss something that was crucial for your growth. And it's the same thing with your customer. You don't think your customer feels it? Right. You don't think your children feel it? You don't think your wallet feels it? Well, now let's talk about your wallet. You don't think your wallet feels it when you feel like being distracted and you start doing this for no reason? Right. Why? Why? Because we like to be distracted. Why? Why are we addicted to distraction? Because we're afraid to fail. Because we're afraid to focus on the right things. We're afraid to focus on the right things, guys. Even on an emotional level, we'd rather deal with a whole bunch of other shit than have to deal with what we really need to deal with. Uh huh. So why do we spend when we're not supposed to spend? It's called refill happiness. <laughs> instant gratification. Instant gratification. Why is that instant gratification so important? It just feels good at that moment. It just feels good at that moment. Oh, even when you wear it again. It sounds like a Gucci just paid him to say shit like yeah, that. You know, yeah. everyone's going to fly over to Gucci <laughs> after this. No, but seriously. Seriously. Why is it more important to make ourselves feel good at that one specific moment? Aha. So what's your level of addiction to distraction? Hi. Hi. Thank you for being honest with yourself and write it down. I am highly addicted to distraction. It's my highest addiction. Write it down. I'm Yes. Mike, can I join your association? DAA, you know? Distraction has to add. How about? Most people don't reach financial abundance because they're scared of it. They're like, I'd rather just spend it now than be able to have to deal with this thing, investing and money management. <laughs> oh. Why don't we just go to Gucci? That's a, that's so a much easier. This is a fact. Most people, that's what they like to do, especially in your line of work. Mm -hmm. Let's spend quicker than we make. Why? Because most of us don't think that we deserve financial abundance. So let's spend it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I've made you guys feel very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel it in the room. You put us down. I know. No, no, we have to feel. No, no, no. Well, think about it, right? You don't know it. The ability, the ability to go against your own grain is for you to be able to grow yourself. Yeah. Right? Sure. For you to not go like this on things you don't need and just control yourself is you controlling your own fear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of what? That instant gratification, right? What if I could do something great with? Huh, do we think like that? What if I didn't go to Gucci and did something great with that money? How great would that make me feel? Most people are scared of these types of questions. Now let's just go to Gucci. <laughs> So much easier. Let's just do that. What about being inconvenienced? I'm going to have to invest. I'm going to have to think about money, you know, like the song, mine on my money and my money on my mind. Mm -hmm. Most people don't even want to do that. I don't want to have to think about my money. I just, ugh. no, you have to think about it. It's got to be top of mind. Those three things that you wrote on your list are your top of mind. And your wealth must be one of them. 
right? Mm -hmm. So when Gucci and your distractions are more important than your goals, you know that you are not looking, you're looking at your funnel reversed. You're not focusing on the right things. How much time do we end up doing that? Wow. Wow. So that's a conscious exercise for you all to take the time and realize, huh, I'm not telling you not to spend. I'm telling you to spend wisely. Right. Just wisely. Right? And we forget about that. We get on this constant. And then are we really moving forward? We're not. You're like a rat going around, 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 and living exactly the same things. What about uh, people that are just like, oh, I'm just not in the mood to make money today? Does that happen to you guys? Just don't feel like making money today. I wouldn't say I don't feel like making money. I would say more like, I don't want to do what it's going to take mm -hmm. to make yeah. the money. Of course. But that's why I said it the way I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's be real. Right? Yeah. So how often do I decide not to make money? That's what I want you to write down. How often do I decide not to make money? Because if... <laughs> how often do I decide not to make money? Is it once a week I decide not to make money? Is it once a month? Is it five days a week? Almost. How many days do I decide not to make money? I would say for me, for example, when I get a little bit disappointed and I feel that as much as I work, I don't see the results. Yeah. I get, I have less motivation. And yeah. that day I feel that, okay, I don't feel making money. <laughs> yeah. So what is motivation? Because you said, I don't feel motivated. What yeah, is motivation? Making money. Mm, yeah, getting results for what I, what I work on. So you're right. Motivation money, is motivate into action, mm -hmm. right? But motivation is missing the last piece. Motivate to action into results, yeah. right? And you can only get that result piece once you've practiced enough, right? And figured out how does it work for you? It works differently for everybody, yeah. right? The copy paste of success, there are some rules, there are some regulations, there's things you must follow, but at the end of the day, you do you. So who are you, <clears throat> right? So you use all the skills, you use all the practice, you figure it out. If you're constantly feeling like, oh, I don't feel like work today because nothing worked yesterday. Well, guess what? You're going to make something work today and you need to figure you out. Every day, day, that's what we're lucky, right? that's, that's, and no one's going to figure it out that. for you. Mike, your style is different than George's style is different than everybody's style in here. Your right? style is different than Jessica's style. Yeah. <laughs> so how many, how many times a week do you decide not to make money? Write it down. Good. Now decide, am I going to follow down that path? Or am I not? And how many times will I tell myself every time I have that conscious thought, I don't feel like doing what I need to do to actually make money today, that the thought right after is, am I telling myself I don't want to make money today? Because we have a conversation going on in that little brain of ours. <clears throat> am I really saying I don't want to make money today? Now. If you say, yes, I don't want to make money today, and you are affirmative about it, go off. Go do something else. But be conscious. That is your conscious choice. You have decided not to make any money today. Huh. What if you give yourself a little cookie? If I work X amount of days out to make money, I will give myself a cookie at the end of the month. Guys, we're little human beings. Well, we were all little, we all want the little cookies. Just make sure it's not friggin' Gucci. 
<laughs> every time. And that you're actually giving yourself cookies for results, right? You're out all to be able to discover who you are. So do you. And as you do you, you get to be so excited. Today, I'm going to wake up and make money. And you may turn around and say, you know what? It's not just about money. I want to be able to turn around and make my customers so happy that they make me money. <laughs> right? Sell it to yourself the way you want. But you spending time being distracted is going to give you a big patata. Nada. Right? It's not going to help your family. It's not going to help you. It's not going to do anything. So what makes you be able to do that? Like we're talking about it. It's great. But how are we going to make sure after this time we spend together, you're going to go out and you're going to be fired and you're going to do that for the next, as long as you decide to stay accountable to it. What will make that happen for you? What will make you leave this room and say, I'm going to make money this week, this month, this year, the next 10 years, 15, 20, 25. What's going to make it happen in your mind, that click? What will that be? Clear goals. Clear goals. What else? Your beliefs. Your beliefs. If you grew up in a home that money was evil, guess what? <laughs> guess what? you're still going to try to get rid of that money as quickly as possible because you have to stay aligned with your conditioning when it comes to cash. You have to. If you were taught to always invest as a child, then you know that that's what you're supposed to do. Mm. Yes. So guys, figure what that is and know that it exists. And once you know that it exists, you can start changing the programming. So one is your beliefs and the way you believe something are the thoughts that you have. You say, well, I don't know what I believe. Well, yes, you do. Those are the thoughts, right? The beliefs are the roots and the thoughts are the little flowers that show up every day. I hope they're flowers, <laughs> right? How can you change that? By building a character, by changing your character. When I say changing, I'm saying building skill, uh, like skilled sets. And when I say that is, if you're constantly, your little flowers are thinking is, I want to get distracted and I'm going to pretend I'm unconsciously getting distracted by, you know, having a coffee or with no ulterior motive behind having a coffee other than getting caffeinated, understanding how important your character plays in that. Are you somebody who's disciplined? Yes or no? No. And if you're not disciplined, do you think it's something that you do not need? Of course you do. Okay, so why don't you do it? Because I don't feel like it. <laughs> right? Why don't you do it? For sure. How happy would you be if you were disciplined? Right. So happy is not important, right? It is important. Obviously not. You don't do it. <laughs> right? Because you don't follow the discipline. So which one gives you more satisfaction? Disciplined or non-disciplined? Everyone's going to say non-disciplined, obviously. But then if I'm non-disciplined, do I get the result I want? I can't get my results. You can't get your results. So then That's what's true. more important? That's true. What's, your results or your distraction? Hey, Wanyaj, what you're saying, this morning we're having subject, a few of us, and they told me, why do you uh, sign for coaching? I said, I need discipline. I'm missing discipline. And I'm very comfortable in my, you know, I'm in my comfort zone. And... I need some discipline to get back to my track. Bravo. Bravo. And you also need accountability. No, but we're just like what she's saying. Yeah. And we have to admit sometimes our mistakes and admitting we're not, it, admitting yeah. it is it's, 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 it's you're solving half the problem. And admitting. it's the only way you'll grow. Yeah. Admitting it is the first step in DAA. Yeah. The NDAA <laughs> distraction. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. true. And and when you get to discipline, and that's what we were talking to this morning, I said, I'm going to like be more disciplined to reach my this year goals because I have different goals than last year. And if I don't get more than discipline, I won't reach it. And I know myself because I'm being so lenient. No. So I'm discipline? Lacking, I'm lacking discipline. And that's why it's making my goals, you know, on the top. Discipline is only you that can do. 
accountability a coach can give you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Two different things. Yeah. Right? But at the end of the day, you depend on who? Yourself. Yeah. Uh-huh. So if George in the next year becomes disciplined person, do you think it'll change his character? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. For the better. So I ask you, what are the character traits you need to build on this year to live the life you want for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? What are they? Can we come up with three? He said discipline. That's a good one. Everybody can copy that one. Is that okay if people copy? Okay. (laughs) So your characters, your thinking, and your beliefs. Right? So let's go back to that idea that before seven or eight years old, we were set, we were told that money was evil or money was bad or that you had to get rid of it or you would be evil if you had more than what you need. Right? It's okay. And we get that also. You can't be half two gods. You have to have one God or money or God. That's it. But don't touch the money. You're right. Yeah, but what if you're God? What if your God was for you to live the most complete life you can? And money is only but one limb. And love is just one leg. And family is the other leg. And the other hand is probably character because your character is who you choose to be. Or is it? Do you choose to be the way you are? Or do you just? No, you choose the way you want to be. Do you? Of course. You think most people choose? No, because they get uh, uh, more um, brainwashed. They're not conscious. Influence. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. So is that the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset? Yes. Right? Yes. You know, 10 years ago, a study came out on neuroplasticity. And I love, love, love those studies because it proved to you to no matter what age you are, you can still grow and become the person you want to be. You just have to believe, think it, and grow that character. Mm -hmm. So if I told you, if you guys want to become wealthy, what would you have to do? You'd have to change your beliefs or understand what your beliefs are or the roots of the beliefs. Mm -hmm. You'd have to start understanding or listening to your own internal conversation. And the internal conversations are the little flowers or the little leaves that start popping up. And the ones that don't serve you, what do we do, Bianca? Delete. Delete. That's what we do. We delete those. We take them with our little scissor and we cut the flower or we cut that branch. Because if that's what we need to do, that's what we're going to do. So every time you have a bad thought or you have a bad belief or a character trait that you no longer no longer want, you nice easily delete. Cut the branch off. You have that choice. You have that ability. So why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? I've known it for 25 years. Now. Huh? What'd you say? I said because certain people or certain things that you want to delete, you've known for a very, very long time. So. Yeah. And so do they serve you? Some can. Some can. So what if you were to do a small audit? Anything that doesn't serve you, you delete it. Can you do that? I did it with my coach uh, last two weeks. Yeah. And now it's to continue to do that. Every time a thought comes up that's in your old programming, you delete. 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 And understand that whatever thoughts that you or beliefs that you were given that you may not like, you cannot have two gods. I'm going to use that example. Okay only came from somebody who thought they were doing their best. And that was their way of thinking and they were given that type of thinking. It wasn't there to harm you or hurt you. They were doing the best, but that no longer serves you. So you and you make your own. You make your own thoughts, your own beliefs and your own character. You have the ability to do that, right? Are you the program or is the program you? You make that decision. So this guy, um, Stuart Wilde, once said, the key to success is to raise your own energy. When you do, 
people will naturally be attracted to you. And when they do show up, bill them. <laughs> I love that one, right? Because the more you work on you and the more you work on your thinking, your beliefs and your character traits, the more people will be attracted to you. Right. And the more that you are people that you are attracted, people are attracted to you, you bill. Isn't that what you guys do? You compete against other people right. because you're in a personality-based business where if people like you, they will hire you. Well, it's the same thing. We build them. And then you build them, right? And then you do it again and again and again. So any of you have um, difficulty raising your energy level daily to do what you do? You do? do. We spoke about this. Um, who else said? I do. You too? What do you not like to do? It starts with a P, guys. Prospecting. <laughs> Prospecting. Talking to people. Talking to people. Is that a challenge for people? Yeah. yeah. I can say that now it's less than before. But the thing that I think is that sometimes I feel that I lose patience. You? I lose patience. I feel that I am not patient enough. So let's talk about that. That's yes. such a great subject. Do you think that people that are worthy, that, that are wealthy, are impatient on how they got there or when they got there? Or did they just consistently work at it? Now, my other question is, when is the last time impatience has ha ever helped you for anything? Raise your hand. I'd like to know the story. Impatience? Impatience. When has impatience ever, ever served you? No. Never. So why do you do it? Because I feel like it. <laughs> right? Is that a delete kind of moment? Delete. Right? Every time you feel impatient, this delete. <laughs> <laughs> right? So every single time you say, okay, well, you know, I'm feeling like this. I'm feeling like that. Who's the boss? Your feelings? Yeah. Or your goals and where you want to achieve and where you want to go? You make your decision. And you stick to it. It's called discipline. <laughs> That's it. You go back to discipline. It goes back. But you need energy. You need that energy level, right? What gives you energy in life? Physical movement. Physical movement. What else? Sex. Sure. <laughs> Music. <laughs> what else? The weather. The weather. The sun, when you do the sun outside, you like feel like you're even cold, but the sun is language. Yeah. Also, language. So, if you consistently repeat the right stuff, uh -huh. you put the right stuff in your head. So, there you go. The your internal conversation that gives you energy. If you tell yourself, you know, dumb thing, you did. Someone me this morning. Right? You do one of two things, or one, you convince yourself out of that mood. Right? Yeah, you have no choice. Or two, change your environment. So your external environment convinces you that that's not the mood you're in, because the mood is what? Just one passing emotion. Mm -hmm. Moods come and go. You decide how long you want to live there. So if you want to be impatient and perhaps intolerable, that is your choice. Right? So how often do you do that thermometer check? Do you show up with, like the person you want to be or that you are? That's again your choice. Hmm. So speaking of energy, and I repeat this one all the time because I said it two weeks ago and I repeat it. This is one that go, goes on in my head all the time. I repeat it every single time I feel, I feel tired, I say, Fatigue makes a coward of all men. Huh. Repeat it, please. Fatigue makes a coward 
of all men. Okay. I say to myself all the time, I had a long day. I really don't feel like it. I'm tired. Fatigue. Rich. A coward of all men. Why? Why? Because it's true, guys. It's almost like the minute you say, I'm tired, you just let go. You give up. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You give up. You give up everything that you wanted to do with the simple words of that you use in your brain, which is, I'm tired. And all of a sudden, you surrender. You surrender to the idea that you have no more capacities. Fatigue makes a coward of all men. Mm-hmm. And which men are cowards that have no more energy that are wealthy? How many? None. None. So every time you say, I'm tired and I don't feel like it, you turn around and say, do I want to be a wealthy woman or a wealthy man? Those are bipolar thoughts. The minute that you have bipolar thoughts, you will not achieve what you want because you need to be completely aligned for you to reach that success. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's a tough one to understand. And I say that just because what we do daily is different, right? We're all gonna scatter out and you know what's gonna happen? Right? And what I would tell you is every single time one of those thoughts come out you, why is it going to give you anything will it serve you in any shape or form no No. that's called the power of reframing reframing is something that changed my life i studied nlp seven years ago neuro-linguistic programming and one of the best techniques is reframing the minute you learn how to reframe stuff it changes your life you learn to reframe You learn to reframe. And every single time you cut off a leaf, you grow a leaf that you want. But you're conscious of the one you just cut off. And you say, you don't show up here ever again. You do not belong here. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you can't grow apples and pears, right? You can only grow apples or pears Mm -hmm. if you want something to grow. So decide what's going to grow. You make a decision. Is it going to be, we all have negative thoughts. We all have negative thinking. We all have negative beliefs. We all have negative character traits, but who controls? Mm -hmm. But it's a battle. Who wins? Who wins? Because it's called momentum. What direction will you go to? Yeah. Can you go back and do a power of the reframing? Yes, what do you want to know? Just give me an example. Reframe something. I do everything in reframing. I need. I don't want to prospect. I don't want to prospect. Okay. So the good news is that you're not going to be alone in your basement contemplating how you're going to make money. You are so lucky to have a real estate license and a place where you can go talk to people about buying and selling something in a career that you actually love. Does anybody catch that? Yeah. Was that like a group question? I reframe everything. I reframe everything. Every single time something bad comes, I, I cut the leaf off and I say, Look, this can grow in this direction. Right? Is it kind of an affirmation? Hmm? You can say it until the moon, but it's kind of an affirmation. What you can say, it's like changing your it's attitude. More, it's towards more something. of changing your thought than an mm-hmm. affirmation. An affirmation is like you. I don't know why I asked your question. No, but it's great. I love it when people answer the questions because getting you involved for you to really understand, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. It's more of changing big, your, your bad thought bad into thought, a good yeah, thought. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's more of spinning it as I don't feel like doing this, as opposed to once I do this, it's going to be done with and we can move on to something else. Exactly. Like, I don't want to wake up and go to the gym. Oh, 
one, that one hour, once it's done, there's nothing else that could go bad after that. It's the worst part of the day. Right, right, done right. And let's go. So think about it, right? We all want to negotiate with ourselves, right? Who negotiates with themselves? I negotiate my personal training. I negotiate with myself all the time, right? So you say, I have to go to the gym, but I really don't feel like it. You can negotiate this way. Say, I'm supposed to go for an hour, but I'm just going to go for 45 minutes. But I have to go. Yeah. So let's go. Now, who's going to control what you feel like in 45 minutes? Maybe you're going to want to finish that workout. And maybe that's all you need for that day is that 45 minutes. And that's cool. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Negotiating with yourself is part of who you are. You can't be tough on yourself. Like, no, it wasn't good enough. I stayed 58 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I am a failure because I stayed 50. Okay, relax. Right? Celebrate the fact that you went for 58 minutes. Celebrate even if you went for half an hour. God damn it, you went. Right? Don't be so tough on yourself that you hate yourself. It's being able to find that in between. Right? I mean, I've done this, this whole, the whole wealth talk. And people have already in the past have told me, what if I don't want to be wealthy? I'm like, okay, great. That's your choice. You can stop whenever you want, right? You can stop after 20 grand if you think that's wealthy for you. You can stop after a million. That's your definition, right? But that's a barrier. That person just wanted to what? Object. I object. I don't want to be wealthy. Well, what if I told you you kind of did, but on your terms and whatever that word means for you? That's called a reframe. I reframe all the time so that it makes sense for me. Yeah. I have an like when you were saying about the gym and being kinder to ourselves, like it made me think of something yesterday that I thought of because I was prospecting and I was happy because it was the first time I had done expires in a really long time. I booked an appointment. I prospected for like two and a half hours, but I only did 11 contacts. So I'm like, yes, I succeeded in booking an appointment, but fuck, I fucked up. I only did 11. It's not the number I wanted to achieve. How long did so you prospect? Like, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. So nobody was picking up. Yeah, it was fucking long. But? You realize you got ready. your appointment in 11 contacts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you used to get your appointment in 25, 30 contacts? More. Okay. That sounds like a win. Different angle, you know? Yeah. Like an That's called a reframe. Yeah. See? It's you also it self-satisfaction. It's, mm -hmm. it's satisfaction, self-satisfaction. Is there anything else that you could have been doing to be able to have spoken to 11 people in only two hours? Maybe filter the list beforehand. Sure. Yeah. But besides that, is there anything else you could have done? Not really. That's a nice pat on the back. Yeah. I did the yeah. best I could with my time. When I went to bed that night, I did everything I can to speak to as many people as possible. Wow, today was a great day. So just so that you can understand that it's normal, mm -hmm. I did 20 contacts today and I booked two appointments. So that's pretty much, that means it's a good number. number. It's a good number. For, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, 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 you're connecting with the client. Yeah. So you got to look at it that way. connecting with your right client. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many. Like Mike said, 33 versus you stick your 25 versus yeah. 11. Yeah. You Instead of hitting this 30, 30, 30 every day. No, it doesn't matter. No. It takes you 10 and you booked your appointment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about it, right? Yeah. So you have to put in a hard line, right? Because you know people are going to dilly dally around that hard line, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that hard line is the 30. Yeah. But you must be satisfied with whatever result you do get as long as it's a better result than you got the day before. Is that a fair deal? Mm -hmm. Is that a fair deal? Mm -hmm. That's called stretching yourself, <laughs> right? Because how easy is it to be comfortable? She could turn around and say, okay, I just want 11 and I get after 11, okay, I'm done. How many of you have ever hit 30 contacts? You're like, woo, I'm done dropping the mic, I'm, I'm out of here. You never tried for 31, 32, 33, 34? Same thing at the gym. Right? I think a couple of weeks ago, I said, what's your relationship with lactic acid? And everybody looked at me funny. I'm like, what do you mean? Right? But that's how you know you're stretching yourself. 
is when you're going to get those reps after that. It's the same thing with everything, right? So now I ask you, what is your financial comfort? What? Is your financial comfort? Because subconsciously, we all have a financial comfort. If you make X, you say, that's it. I'm not working for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know people that do that. I know people that do that. And then they tell me they don't. And then I tell them they do. <laughs> we all have a financial comfort. And the minute you reach that financial comfort, it's like, Whew, I did a workout. Now I can eat some cheeseburgers and some fries and I can relax. <laughs> it's what it is. It's the same thing. We each have a financial comfort. And the minute we get there, it's like fatigue hits our whole body. We're done. How many of you feel that you do that? Nobody in this room, of course. Yeah, of course, you don't have a thermometer. If you've always made 100 grand, the minute you make 120, you will stop. Uh huh. Yalla, tell me. Huh? Tell me. No, me, I'm not that type. Me, I'm the type, I'm going to continue my year to get my maximum I can till the next year, to book for the next year. And I'm good in that. Okay. Um, I lack sometimes. When I do good transaction, I lack for a few days, I relax, but after I go back to my flat. And this is why you're a consistent and successful businessman in real estate. This is why. Because you've decided that you weren't going to stop. Now, you've needed a little bit of discipline and accountability, and you went out and got those tools, okay? Which is fantastic because now you could probably get there a little quicker. Yes, and I agree with that. But without quitting when you get there. Right. Right? That's, so that's why uh, I want to be on this plan because I know if with what I'm doing, I'm doing good. So if I get more discipline and I don't lack on my time when I'm comfortable and I did some good transaction and I say, okay, we relax. So in those times, if I say, let's give it more, I'm going to do much more. And then you have more time to spend with your family. Yes. That's the cookie. Yeah. If I'm able to be more disciplined at work and get the work that I need to get done, mm -hmm. I will have more time with my family mm -hmm. or more time doing one of the top three things that you put. Right? Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be about letting go. I get to something of... I can let go now. It's constant but a pleasurable constant, an enjoyable constant, one that will allow you to build wealth over many years. Who's accepting to that, that grace, that ability, that smoothness into becoming a wealthy person? Who's okay with that? Who removes all barriers? Do you create barriers for yourself? All the time. Yeah, all the time. let go. Let go. Why do you hold on to that shit? Mm. Let go. It's that simple. It shows up, let go. Now, how many of you this week are going to try to realize what are those barriers you put in front of you? Who's going to do that? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. How many of you will write down two or three character skills or character that you believe you need to gain, right? Or delete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. What are the character types you'd like to adopt? I mean, I think two, four years ago, I decided I was going to work on my character for a year. And every day, I'd work on my character. I was not the same person after that one year. Yeah. Make can a decision. You, can I add to that? Yeah, of course. Uh, the way I frame, reframe it is what does future Bianca want to look like? Or who does future Bianca want to be? And I see myself there, and so then I can take the actions mm -hmm. to be that person. 
like visualizing yeah. it. So what I love about that is that you visually, and this is something I wanted to ask you guys. Would you guys be in if we did like a little bit of a vision board two, three session? Yeah, yeah. I haven't done more than one. Okay. Um, having some sort of visual on, on where you want to be and how you want to be is very, very helpful to find out what is the gap between both and to find out what type of character you want to be, right? As we age, we unconsciously realize who we become. You have the power to have that in your own hands. What character type, what character do you need to be? He said, I want to be more disciplined. He said, I want to be more efficient. And guess what? When he accomplishes those two things, he's going to go home and spend time with Chloe. That shit rocks. That's amazing. 100%. That's amazing. So map it out for yourself. Visually map it out for yourself. Because you're the present moment at the end of the day, is your present. That's all it is. It's your present. Mm -hmm. You know why kids and adults don't get along? Because kids live in the present. We always live in the past or in the future. That's why we don't get along. Mm -hmm. mm. So, huh? I think I still live in the present. Do you? That's a good thing. I didn't good. say instant gratification and distraction and all of that stuff. I said live in the present, really savor every moment. And kids do that. That's why usually you don't get along. You're like, why aren't you thinking about your socks that are on the floor? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what about understanding your money habits? How about that? Who's going to work on that this week? Your money habits. Are you somebody who makes, 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 spend, 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 makes, make, make, save, save, pay, save, make, 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 invest, invest, invest? And if you were to pick one, which one would you want to be? Make and invest. Okay, so how can we get there? Spend and invest. Okay, what would your percentage be? Maybe a comfortable, comfortable invest. Mm -hmm. comfortable for like trips and things that I want and then if there's extra then I can spend so what if you were to figure that out this week yeah right what would be that percentage right you want to make money you want to invest great what about for today you're going to put something for today other than your figure out what your formula is nobody takes the time to do that I mean there's a million formulas out there 10% for recreational 10% for for investing, 10% for, what is it? What is your money blueprint? So now I've given you four challenges, guys. You pick the one you want. You can do them all. You can do none of them. You can do one of them. But whatever you decide, remember, you are in control, 100% in control of what you think, what you believe, and who you are. Right? Yeah. Because there's three things, three things that you need to detox from. And we'll talk about this next week because I'm running out of time. Is blame, excuses, and justification. Every time one of these branches grow on your trees, we're going to take out the ax. Right? We do those. Blame, justification, and excuses. I didn't want to go to work because my leg hurts. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my fault. It was her fault. It wasn't my fault. It was the cop's fault. It wasn't my fault. It's the car's fault. It wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. I did that because she made me. Justification. I did that because I didn't have a choice. Blame, justification, and excuses. Any of them show up? Bianca, we? The elite. 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 Cut the branch. Cut the branch. There is nothing that's going to serve you when you blame, when you justify, or when you give excuses for the reasons why you are not being and doing who you want to be. That's you deciding to become a victim. 
to your environment instead of you reframing the situation and understanding how you can grow from that. Look at that reframe. Any questions? We're good. Any questions online? Hey guys. <laughs> Are we good online? Yes. Bye, guys.